So now that we've talked about multi-core and why we have multi-core, let's do a little introduction to parallel programming so you can see some of the difficulties in making programs that run on these parallel machines. So, we saw that four cores isn't going to be any faster unless our software knows how to use all four cores at the same time. So we need a program that knows how to split up its work so that all of the processing cores can do something in parallel for it to run faster. This is called parallelization, and this is difficult. Taking a program that does things one at a time and figuring out how to make it do them in parallel is a tricky work job. So we need to divide up the work across all the processor cores, and for some problems this is easy, and for most it's hard. Let's take a look at an easy problem. So we're going to blur an image. Here's our input image, and what we want to do is blur it. So for each pixel in the input image, we're going to look around that pixel, and we're going to average all the colors then that average color is going to be the result in the blurred image. So if you look at this problem, you see it's very easy to divide up. I'm going to do the same thing for every single pixel in the image, regardless of where they are. So if I want to divide this up across four processors, all I have to do, sorry, across two processors, I just cut the image in two and have first processor and the second processor each do half. If I want to divide it up across four processors, I just divide it into four chunks and then have each processor do its own chunk. So this is the easiest kind of parallel programming. It's called data parallel. Here we're doing the same thing to every piece of data, so we just need to divide it up across all the processors. Here's a slightly harder problem, adding up a list of numbers. So we've got a long list of numbers and we want to add it all up, and how are we going to go ahead and do this? Well, we're going to do a reduction. That is, we're going to have each of the processors go and choose some of the numbers and add them up, but then we need to add up those intermediate results. So then we have some more processors go through and take those intermediate results and add them up. So the first set of processors here added up the input and generated intermediate results. Then we go and wait, and when they're all done, we get more processors to go through and add up the intermediate results. Finally, we add up those intermediate results, and at the end, we add up the last intermediate results to get the total value. So this is the final value in the reduction. So how do we assign this to processors? Well, we can assign it this way. We can have the first set of reductions, the first set of computations, be done by a whole bunch of processors. Here we have eight processors that are going to do this in parallel. Now we want to have this processor zero do the next intermediate results, take the previous results from here and here and add them up, but to do that we need to synchronize. So we need to have processor zero wait for processor one to be done, because if it doesn't wait for processor one to be done, it may get the wrong values to add up. So we need to put in what's known as a barrier here, and that barrier first forces them to synchronize. And we're going to need to put in barriers in the rest of the places for the synchronization. And then when we get to the next level, we're going to have to do the same thing with a barrier for synchronization. Finally, at the last one, we're going to have to have another barrier for synchronization, because here we need to make sure processor 0 waits for processor 1, which waited for processor 3, which waited for processor 6 and 7. And if they don't all wait for the right thing, we might get the wrong results. So if you look at what happens here is we have lots of processors that have to synchronize with each other. And this is complicated. It not only makes it harder to write the program because you have to make sure you do the right synchronization, but it also slows down the program because processors have to wait for each other. And this is called synchronization, and synchronization is a hard problem in parallel programming, and we're going to see later in the lecture how we do synchronization in the hardware. But there's another problem here. So let's look at how many processors we're using. So for the first chunk of the program, we're using all eight processors. But then for the second chunk, we're only using four processors. In the third part, two processors. In the last part, we're only using one processor. So for this last part of the program here, we're only using one processor. We're wasting the other seven of our eight processors. So if you look at how effective this is, we have 15 chunks of work total. We're doing them in four steps, four time units. So on average, we're only doing 3.75 pieces of work at a time. That means if we have an 8-core machine, we're only going to use 3.75 processors on average, less than half the machine. This really isn't very good. This problem here is known as load balancing. That is, it's making sure that all of the processors have the same amount of work to do, so you're using the whole machine the whole time. Let's take a look at an even harder problem. So here we're going to count words. We've got a whole bunch of text here and we want to go through and count the number of words in it in parallel. So how are we going to do that? 
Well, the first thing we need to do is find the halfway point. Now, as a human, I can look and say, ah, it's probably about here, between these two words. But a computer doesn't know where between words are. So what the computer is going to have to do is first guess a halfway point, and then it's going to have to step backwards until it finds a space. Once it's found a space, it knows it's the end of the word, and now it can go ahead and divide up the text and send one chunk to each processor. So if we look at what this had to do here, the second part, where we do the word counting after we've divided it up, that we can do in parallel. The first, second processor can do all of this, while the first processor does, does this. But the first part, where we're trying to find the split point, that has to be done serially, because we have to walk through this and find the point before we can tell which one to work on. So here we have a problem where part of it is serial and part of it is parallel. 